There's been a sell down in the markets recently, most notably with tech stocks taking the real brunt. The Nasdaq's fallen by most and we've got some really big tech stocks that have risen by most that have been seeing some of the biggest losses. When you get a, a drop in some parts of the market, quite often you get a sell off across the board. And this has been happening with uh, some of the sectors uh, where perhaps maybe there's been an overdone uh, downside position taken. One of those I want to discuss now is the mining sector with John Mayer from SP Angel. Uh, John, it's good to catch up with you. And we've got to talk about this market downturn. And to be frank, and as you mentioned in your morning report today, that there are some economic headwinds beginning to build as well. So add this into the downturn. How are you viewing things at the moment, first of all, from the big picture? Yeah, th there are things that are, are not as rosy as, as some of the, the PMI stats would suggest. And clearly there are parts of the sector, parts of the economy that have been really hard hit by, by the virus. I mean, the airline sector, the tourism, leisure, hotels, all that, all that sort of stuff has been so badly damaged. And that means that there's a big part of the economy that's, that's going to take a while to recover. And yes, when the economists talk about a double dip recession, I think they're really referring to the impact of this part of the economy on, on the rest of what's happening. Now, it's very much a two two tier thing because many other areas are doing really well. So mining companies in general are performing pretty well, unless you're in Latin America, which has been hit harder by the coronavirus and Indonesia and certain parts of the world like that. So, so there is this two speed thing going on. Yes, manufacturing growth is fantastic. Yes, services are recovering really very well, actually. And it's good to see the you know, the restaurants and, and many bars back open again. But we are heading, certainly in the UK, into a period where things might, uh, things are going to get pulled back. The UK government is, well, there was a newspaper talking about a potential curfew this morning, uh, just trying to slow down the rate of infection again. Uh, what we're, we're, we're not seeing many cases go into, into hospitalisation at the moment, but the fear is that maybe some more of that is, is going to come at us. So I think Naturally, many people who would normally be investing in, in businesses, in manufacturing, in facilities are a little bit cautious. Remember, we're heading into October when markets are often quite wobbly anyway. I'm not, I'm not convinced we're going to see a crash of sorts, but clearly the US tech sector was, was a bit overdone for various technical reasons, as have been well described by, by the Financial Times, for example. So there's, there's, there's a lot happening. I still think. I mean, a pullback is never is never a bad thing in many cases. And we saw Rio Tinto, BHP, Glencore all have a great run up. They've paused because naturally people felt perhaps perhaps they'd run too far too quickly. I think in many respects, people were buying these stocks for the dividend growth that they might see. And even if it's not dividend growth, those dividends are going to look really good relative to lots of other companies. Shell and BP slashing dividends, for example, they're not the leaders in, in the dividend game anymore. It's going, to, it's going to be Rio Tinto, BHP and some of the other miners in, in, in that. So if you're looking for yield, I think many of the miners uh, with strong cash flow are going to do well. Gold companies, um, many of the base metals companies should be, should be recovering quite fast. And gold companies have spectacular earnings at the moment. Even if you look at the South African sector, which got hit quite hard by the lockdown, the recovery and the, the benefits from higher metals prices have been have shown to be really, really good. So they're, they're managing a, a tricky situation very well with the added benefit of low fuel prices and uh, weaker local currencies. So that's that, you know, there are there are other benefits coming in there. But I just think there's one thing to be mentioned here with, with that outlook. Uh, part of this is based on markets like to price in uh, what's around the corner. Sometimes you can't see what's around the corner and we don't know what's coming. But uh, one of the things I know the markets have been hoping for, uh, that is a vaccine. Uh, for COVID-19. And we know that one of the most advanced trials in the Western markets, the trials that can be relied upon, the trials that are, uh, are going to produce a vaccine that will ultimately work, we hope. Uh, we've now heard today that there has been a little bit of a road bump there because of one of the candidates, for whatever reason, has developed some symptoms which can, may or may not be attributed to the vaccine. Now, this could actually stall a possible vaccine. Is this something you think we should be concerned about. Clearly, you're talking there about COVID-19 as an issue. And with this uptick in cases, yes, we're not getting so many hospitalizations. Uh, but the worry about a curfew, I guess, has got to uh, be another headwind that we don't yet possibly know about. 
Well, I believe AstraZeneca are reported as 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 saying that they're, they're being very precautionary. One person out of the trial, and it, it's a very big trial, uh, has got ill with something. So they need to check out exactly what what has caused this illness. Is it anything to do with the vaccine? The chances are probably not. But you know, with vaccines, you've got to be very cautious, very very careful. Um, otherwise, you could risk poisoning people in the population and simply country, companies like AstraZeneca are, are not going to take that risk because if they did that it would be the end of the company. Um, it's This is the Oxford trial, it certainly has a, a, a lot of positivity behind it and yes if if this vaccine proves to be useful and good and giving good protection for against the coronavirus then sure I think the world will return to normal really very quickly. Airlines and hotels will will be will be getting back on track and probably a lot of the social distancing will can can start to fall away particularly if you can if you can show that you've had the vaccine and that that you have immunity so look I, i'm not convinced we're going to roll all the measures away immediately if you see what i mean on on the rollout of a vaccine because it will it will all take time but i do see i, I certainly see a recovery but as the economic numbers suggest yeah, there's, you know, we should be a little bit cautious. It isn't back to full speed straight away. I just want to bring up a chart of copper. We we talk a lot about um, base metals when we get together for our regular discussions. I know we're focusing here mainly on the mining market. So let's take a look at one of the, the big metals we've spoken about. And copper uh, recently has um, hit recent highs. And we, we talked a lot about this. And I know you're fairly uh, bullish on the long term outlook for copper. Interesting, I noticed as well on one of your recent notes, you're talking about electric vehicle sales continuing to rise, which is obviously uh, very bullish for a lot of these companies, not just copper, uh, but also electric uh, vehicle battery metals and so forth, and all the uh, metals that are associated with uh, the new uh, EV space. Um, I'm uh, wondering uh, what you think about this downturn. When you get a downturn like this, and perhaps possibly maybe we do get some sort of interruption, possibly maybe as well, to some of these mines, the, the companies that mine this, obviously are reliant on um, a workforce that are fit to work and if they are hit by the covid uh, uh, issue then obviously they they don't they don't mine metal but the metal then goes up because the the supply issues then then start to kick in uh, do you think this bump in the road if we do get a further downside however much will affect things like copper or do you see copper as a continuation uh, long play well Copper inventory levels continue to fall and we saw another three and a half thousand tonnes come out of the LME this morning. We still see uh, copper effectively coming out of Shanghai as well. Um, no, I, I, I think the stimulus programmes that we're seeing in China and many other parts of the world are, are focusing on, on putting in charging points for electric vehicles, on more uh, green energy infrastructure. So uh, there's a lot of light of hydrogen power has already been put in, but but China is still focusing on wind farms and solar farms, and they use huge amounts of copper as well. Remember that electric vehicles themselves use two to four times as much copper as a, a normal uh, combustion engine car. Um, and the great thing is the, the proportion of sales of electric vehicles is rising fast, and in fact rising faster than I think anyone had anticipated in the UK. So in August, 10% of all cars sold in the UK were electric vehicles of, of one sort or another. And that's, I think that's fantastic news. And let's face it, if, if you're somebody who, who has a lung problem or you've had, you've had the coronavirus and maybe you have some, some longer term symptoms from that, we're not sure how long those, those other symptoms will last for, then you want to be driving something that is, is a clean vehicle. You do not want to be surrounded by a plume of, of diesel fumes, for example. Uh, gasoline fumes are not so bad and actually clean a bit better within the within the exhaust pipe. It's not so easy to clean the particulates out of completely out of diesel exhaust. So, so you know, it, for, this is one of the reasons why we see cities like London tightening up on on people driving into the city and making it more difficult, and more expensive, and extending the hours because it, it's become ever more important to clean the air in the cities for for people with existing lung conditions and, and people who, who may have going lung conditions as a result of, of COVID-19. One of the things we spoke about uh, in a recent interview was uh, the uh, way in which China is dominating uh, the uh, raw material market uh, for a lot of uh, the sort of new technologies that we have. I noticed as well you mentioned that the EU Critical Raw Material Alliance has come about. Um, do you think there's uh, uh, much 
uh, scope for this alliance to uh, try and capture more of the supply market for these uh, new uh, technology metals? Um, because as you said before, we should be concerned that China is taking such a massive market share of the supply of these, uh, of these materials. Well, the EU needs to wake up and smell the coffee and the, the critical materials alliance is, is, is coming on, which is, which is great, but they ne it, needs, it needs to be able to do things. The Chinese are out there. I mean, for example, Kodal Minerals, which has a, a lithium project in Mali, signed an MOU early, uh, last week um, with uh, Sino Hydro, which is part of Power China, uh, which, which may lead to the development of, of that project. They're very proactive. They're, they're secure. They continue to secure supply and metals that will be that are critical for these battery factories and for the electric vehicle manufacturing chain. And of course, the German manufacturers are, are moving quite quickly now towards to more electric vehicles, many more more models and products coming out. Uh, Northvolt are installing their factory in Sweden. But they are still very vulnerable because so much of these, these metals still come out of China. So it's so easy for the Chinese to, to turn around and go, oh, sorry, no lithium or no cobalt for you this week. And all those factories have to grind to a halt. So clearly you can't, you can't have the manufacturing process chain vulnerable like that. So what they need to do is ensure that they've got access and, and contracts and, and secure supply not just for for the for nickel and cobalt and, and and the graphite but also for for the lithium with which they've just added to the the critical raw materials list um which feels a bit late and, and yes i know lithium prices are quite low at the moment but those prices will go up very fast in the west if the chinese impose extra tariffs on their export or just limit their export in some way and this is something we see the chinese doing from time to time yeah, wake up and smell the coffee, as you say. John, look, thanks so much indeed for joining us, uh, catching up with some of the latest news from the mining sector and the outlook, uh, bearing in mind where we are in terms of the uh, broader market picture. That's uh, John Mayer, a partner and uh, one of the founding members and mining analysts at uh, SP Angel.